Good morning, everyone. I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. It is Saturday, January 25th, 2025. Late last night, there along the Blanco Fracture Zone, there was a magnitude 4.7 earthquake. It occurred at 9.36 Pacific Standard Time, West Coast Time, or 11.36 Central Daylight Time. It was fairly shallow, uh, 6.2 miles in depth, or 10 kilometers. This earthquake was not far from a magnitude 6.0 earthquake that occurred last year. On October 30th, it occurred at 12.15 um, p.m. local time, and it was felt by a lot of people. Today's earthquake was felt by, um, so far, seven people said they felt this earthquake. The Blanco Fracture Zone, or the Blanco Transfer Fault Zone, it gets its name because of this is where um, two plates actually meet up and collide. And we actually got spreading here. It is a right lateral transform fault, which runs northwest off the coast of Oregon in the Pacific Northwest here in the United States, extending from the Gorda Ridge in the south to the Juan de Fuca Ridge in the north. And that would be, let's bring this out, this area right here. This is the Juan de Fuca Fault Zone. It is also the location of the Axial Volcano, where it's been showing uplift, and they're expecting an eruption from that location probably sometime this year. The Blanco Transfer Fault varies in width. Let me go back down over here to today's earthquake. Um, about 20 kilometers or 12 miles. Some areas is 75 kilometers or 46.6 miles in width. The Blanco Fracture Zone starts about 150 miles off of Cape Blanco, which is off over here. This basin here has a series of faults that connect it to the Cascadia subduction zone all the way up to the Juan de Fuca Ridge. And it's supposedly moving this location, oh, um, about 1.4 centimeters um, to the east every year. This plate boundary, the Blanco Fracture Zone, is quite active with 10 magnitude 6.0 earthquakes in the past 50 years. Um, they used to say about one every five years. For a magnitude five or greater, there would be probably 150 magnitude fives um, every, oh, within every five years. But as you know, they are increasing, earthquakes are increasing. In 2018, there was a magnitude 6.2 that was on um, August 22nd of 2018. When earthquake faults slip, the surrounding crests and the faults change shape, and this causes the area of the faults to get imparted, increase or decrease amount of the stress. If these faults are already ready to slip and the change of the stress is increased significantly, those sources of earthquakes may trigger earthquakes on the receiver fault, the one with the increased stress. This is termed static Coulomb stress triggering. Now, a lot of people wonder if, yeah, stress would be put upon the Cascadia subduction zone. Tomorrow, January 26, marks 325 years since the 1700 full margin rupture of the Cascadia subduction zone. Scientists believe that it ruptured, it started at about 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It is estimated that the movement, the magnitude, was either an 8.7 or a 9.2. The mega thrust earthquake involved the Juan de Fuca plate, which is, yeah, what's occurring today and has been occurring, from mid Vancouver Island, south along the Pacific Northwest coast as far as Northern California. I don't know if they have monitors that are measuring the amount of stress that is currently built up along the Cascadia subduction zone. 
they are worried enough where they closed down two, I believe it's two shipyards along the West Coast. Um, was it Washington? I don't remember. Maybe you guys would remember when they closed down those um, uh, government shipyards. Was that last year? I can't remember. Um, I'm going to have to look it up and refresh my memory. But, yeah, um, you just need to be prepared in case, yeah, stress is built and there is a large earthquake. Um, yeah, the, there is a, a history of large earthquakes along um, the west coast of the U.S. here in this location. Here's the felt reports that were sent in to USGS saying that they did feel it. Um... Here we have Florence, Oregon, intensity level 2. And we got Mammoth, intensity level 2. And Lincoln City, intensity level 1. Now they have no moment tensor ball to show us what direction that the fault moved. They probably really don't know. Most of the earthquakes that they do report out here are always about 10 kilometers or 6.2 miles. And that's because to get a more accurate um, idea of what happened when the earthquake occurred you need to triangulate um, the earthquakes and we don't really have anything out here to triangulate um, now they do have monitors at the axial volcano so I don't know why they're not using that data to triangulate um, some of these offshore earthquakes you think that they would but like most government offices, yeah, they don't communicate with each other. All you can do is be ready if there is a large earthquake, um, more so with the Cascadia subduction zone. Are you prepared for the destruction of the infrastructure? Are you prepared um, for evacuations because of tsunamis? Remember the article where the West Coast would be toast if they had another... Cascadia subduction zone rupture, a mega earthquake. Everything um, from the interstate would be uh, completely cut off to the west. Overpasses would collapse. Um, a lot of the schools, they have plans to evacuate straight up. You know, and with the cost of replacing and rebuilding, it would probably be decades, decades, literally decades before the infrastructure and homes would be rebuilt for this area. So did you feel this earthquake last night? If so, please put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please share and I appreciate your support. Many of you do support my work. I'm also on Patreon. If you wish to join me over there on Patreon, you can join for free or um, you can pay anywhere from a dollar to five dollars or whatever a month if you wish. But you can join me on Patreon too. I appreciate all of you that do share my videos. Be prepared. Always be prepared. I worry about you guys. Please stay safe and I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.